Aloha everyone. This is June 30th through July 6th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. Let's get into it. We pick up on June 30th back down in Kapoho. The ocean entry has had some deviations over the previous days and it's starting to work its way back to the north, which means more bad news for the very few remaining homes in Kapoho. This ocean entry has been developing over the previous week or two, such that it is not varying as much, but it's starting to look like it's developing some tube systems very close to the coastline where it will enter into an area that has a solidified top, but the inside is still molten, kind of like a jelly donut, so to speak. And the lava is able to flow through that molten layer to make it to the coast. But what we're seeing now is it's starting to somewhat seem like it's creating a backup and that's causing some additional variations. The lava channel at this point though has been pretty consistent. There hasn't been any breaches or any diversions that have significantly changed the course of the lava. It's still confined to the channel walls with the occasional overflow just making those channel walls a little bit more robust each time. Though the lava channel hasn't really changed much over the previous couple of weeks, it's still very interesting. One of the phenomena that we've observed is these lava nados, these vortexes of hot air that are able to throw little bits of molten rock out of the lava channel. Very interesting stuff. This updraft that comes off the lava channel because of all the hot air is interesting too. Um, one of the instances that I'm aware of was a drone operator that was flying low towards the lava channel. And when the lava was underneath the drone, when that drone crossed into the channel, it did a backflip off of all of that hot air coming up off the lava. So the operator decided to try it again and it did another backflip. At that point he decided uh, maybe this flight isn't going to happen. All right, this is June 30th. This is Stacy Welch. This is Fisher 8. So while the main thing going on still is the eruption at Fisher 8 and that seven mile long lava channel going down to feed this two mile wide ocean entry, there's more activity taking place, primarily at Fisher 22. Now, while Fisher 8 is in this effusive style eruption with this large AA flow, Fisher 22 is in a Strombolian style activity, which means it's not producing a lava flow, but it's throwing a lot of rocks up into the air, which are landing and forming a very pronounced cone. This is the type of cone that if you asked a small child to draw a volcano, they would probably draw it for you. It's very reminiscent of the type of volcano that many people would envision when you ask them to think, think of one. It is now July 1st. We're on the morning overflight with Bruce Omori and Mick Calver as they fly over Kapoho. We see that the lava delta that was encroaching into the subdivision has not advanced significantly overnight, which is a little bit of good news. You kind of take whatever good news you can get in this situation. But I want to focus a little bit on this section of the lava channel right by Green Mountain. This is going to become more important as the episode progresses. And over the next couple of days, we're going to see some changes here. But as of right now, it still remains very similar to what it has been over the previous couple of weeks. As evening progresses on July 1st, we start to see that this lava channel is no longer feeding into this tube-like system in the lava delta, which then percolates the lava out into the ocean, but is reset and is flowing on top of the lava delta. Now that's a change that we haven't really seen up until this point and starts to make some impacts. The first immediate impact is lava is continuing its advancement back into Kapoho, so more homes are lost. Meanwhile, back up at Fisher 8, not much has changed significantly. The only real variation is in the forms of the pulses and surges that we've discussed previously and are ongoing. The lava channel and the vent itself is mostly stable and erupting in a steady state. There is some variation though when it rains and not in the eruption itself, but more in the weather. This eruption is creating its own weather patterns, its own little microclimate which includes a tremendous amount of rainfall for Leilani Estates. There are days where it rains 12 inches in less than 12 hours. It's simply incredible amounts of rain being thrown down on Leilani Estates. It's directly downwind from this erupting fissure. 
We end July 2nd with a look at the thermal map produced by the USGS. And this thermal map shows that the ocean entry has changed with that lava flow that's now flowing on top of the lava delta, as well as the expansion of the flanks into the Kapoho farm lots, which is claiming more homes as the day progresses. We also get a look at Fisher 22 up by the Puna Geothermal Venture doing its Strombolian activity. July 3rd is when things start to change down by Green Mountain. The lava channel that was running down Highway 132 before it made a dog lake bend around the crater to go towards Capoho has backed up, is overflowing, and is starting to look like it's going to divert itself. Now this, we haven't seen this before in this eruption. It's been very stable lava channel up until this point. Unfortunately, as the lava channel starts to get more volatile, it begins to re-advance into the Capoho beach lots and farm lots destroying some of the few remaining homes in that area. The blue home, that three-story newly built home that was down in the beach lots, that was kind of that symbol of resilience, that flow stopped right on its doorstep, is now gone as well. We rejoin on July 4th with Mick Calver and Bruce Amari in the morning overflight. We're looking down at that section of the bend around the Capoho crater Green Mountain that funnels lava down to Kapoho. Now this bend was one lava channel, it overflowed the previous day, and now it looks like there's an inner lava channel that is running through a small section of tube before rejoining with the original lava channel around the bend. Now, there was one interesting thing about July 4th that I distinctly remember, and that had to do with fireworks. Now for those of you that are familiar with Hawaii, you know that Hawaii goes hard on fireworks on July 4th and New Year's, except for this year. I was in HPP, Hawaiian Paradise Park, and staying with some friends that night. Normally, a bunch of guys that set off a big amount of fireworks, but not this night. HPP was very quiet, and for us, it had to do with the smell and the sound. We just didn't, that gunpowder smell, that sulfur smell, we just had enough of it and had no interest in doing it for leisure. It is now July 5th. We rejoin Akaika Marzo back on his boat offshore of Kapoho. Now, one thing that Akaika documents right here that isn't very much talked about is the massive casualties that the marine life underwent from the ocean entry and the algae bloom that came about a little bit later. And you can see here all these dead fish and there's also dead turtles on the coastline. It's heartbreaking stuff. Um, it's not just, you know, new land being created. There is hardships that not just the people underwent. Also on July 5th, we get another look at the then the lava channel makes around Green Mountain down by Four Corners as it makes its way to Kapoho. This area has been volatile the previous couple days, but it's starting to look like the lava channel is developing more and there's less overflows here. Maybe that was just a little hiccup. Um, at this point in time, we really don't know. We step into July 6th with another look at the bend of the lava channel around the Kapoho crater it's seemingly becoming more and more developed. That small section of tube looks like it's being whittled away in terms of the amount of volume going through there as the alternative lava channel around it gets more pronounced. Maybe it's over in terms of the changes of the lava channel. Maybe it's not. One of the final things I wanna talk about for July 6th is the cone of Fisher 22. You can see it back there behind the Puna Geothermal Venture, behind the lava channel that big cone that has been developing over the previous couple of weeks as this Strombolian activity at Fisher 22 continues all day and night. It's only getting taller and more pronounced as time progresses. We end July 6th by looking at another thermal map produced by the USGS, which shows some of the changes that have been taking place in the Kapoho area, including that more pronounced dog leg that has come about near the four corners in the Kapoho crater. Fisher 22 is still having that Strombolian activity as Fisher 8 continues its dominance. That'll do it for June 30th through July 6th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. In this episode, we looked at some of the hardships facing the marine life, the changes that were taking place near Four Corners in the lava channel, 
and a little interesting tidbit about the lack of fireworks on July 4th. Until next time, aloha.